Yeah, joining us now is Foreign Office Minister James Cleverley. Uh, good morning to you, Mr Cleverley. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we hear so much about the uh, evacuation, uh, about the way the British government responded to the Taliban's uh, advances. Uh, uh, lots of people agreeing, disagreeing. I mean, even there, we've just had a debate about pen farthing. They disagreed on some key issues, but everybody seems to agree that it was a complete disaster, the evacuation. It was a foreign policy disaster, uh, and your government was in charge of it. Well, the evacuation and repatriation exercise brought over 15,000 people out of Afghanistan in a country that had been taken over by the Taliban. We had been advising uh, British nationals to leave Afghanistan from April of this year. We, sat, we set up the Arab scheme to evacuate uh, interpreters and other Afghans that had worked with us also back in April. And many thousands of Afghans were evacuated between April and the fall of Kabul. At the point where Kabul airport was under uh, direct risk from the Taliban, we mobilised 16 Air Assault Brigade and the uh, airborne forces were uh, put in to secure the airport. And over the uh, last couple of weeks, as I say, we managed to evacuate 15,000 people, British nationals, Afghans that work with us, and also Afghans who we identified would be at high risk of reprisals from the Taliban. Do we this have a number? A... Sorry to interrupt. Do we have a number on of those that were left behind, though? Because we, we knew it was going to be the case, wasn't it, that not everybody would be able to be saved at this stage who needed to be rescued, to be brought out. Do we know yet how many? Well, as you say, it, it was... Uh, we always knew we had a limited time window. We tried to uh, extend that. Uh, obviously, the Taliban made it very, very clear that they uh, were not going to allow any extension of the airhead beyond the 31st of August. So we knew we had a limited uh, time window. And we also knew because the Taliban basically controlled the ground uh, in the immediate vicinity of the airport, as well as more broadly in Afghanistan, that the ability to get Afghans through their checkpoints was largely in their hands. And against that backdrop, frankly, um, being able to evacuate, let's say, 15,000 people, uh, I think, was uh, an outstanding... It's outstand un undoubtedly uh, extraordinary to be able to do that. It's great. But we're just wondering, you know, are we looking at 1,000 people? Uh, Labour are suggesting it could be as many as 5,000. There are other reports it could be 8,000. Well, it's not possible for anyone to put a specific figure on the number of Afghans who deserve our help and support. But what we have done is uh, we have already initiated, uh, we're uh, already involved in discussions with countries uh, immediately bordering Afghanistan and other countries in the region to continue that evacuation and repatriation well, effort. Now, Dominic, this, of course, is James Cleverly. More James Cleverly, Dominic Rubb, could have been doing that six months ago, but he didn't talk to Pakistan, he didn't talk to the other countries that are surrounding there because he was complacent about it. it it's fair to say that, isn't it? You may be talking no, about it now, but, but it's no, too it's late, not. you're playing catch-up. No, it's not fair to say that at all. Dominic Raab is not the only minister in the Foreign Office. The, uh, all the ministers in the Foreign Office have responsibility for geographic areas. The minister that has responsibility for Afghanistan and Pakistan speaks, speaks and spoke very regularly with his counterparts. The minister has responsibility for uh, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, um, uh, speaks with uh, speaks with her counterparts. This is uh, foreign affairs is about relationship building, and that is done right across the ministerial portfolio. And I know some people are very very keen to um, uh, to, to to say, oh, this would have been so much easier if this one other thing had changed. The simple truth is, this was the most challenging, complicated, dangerous evacuation operation that I think any country has been involved in, uh, certainly in my lifetime. Um, and uh, it was done against the backdrop of the Taliban progress through Afghanistan much faster than anyone in the world had predicted. That's why I'm incredibly proud. I think we should all be incredibly proud of the work that was done um, by 
all the government departments involved in this, some more visible than others, but this was a real cross-government uh, effort, and that effort does not stop. Yeah, just we know because... it's we know it's a very it has been a very difficult situation, and it's you know it is a brilliant job, as you say, that, that, that they've got the result that they have. But it you know there are not just accusations about phone calls not made; there are also accusations about emails not being read, um, that the Foreign Office ignored pleas for help, thousands of emails were not read. This is according to someone who had access to these Foreign Office emails email accounts, some 5,000 or so emails that were people pleading for help were not read? Well, the, uh, the priority that we had whilst we had access to Kabul airport was to make sure that all the people who had contacted us had, had uh, received approvals and had been called forward got onto aeroplanes whilst we still had that, uh, that air um, uh, access. That was the priority. We received a huge influx of correspondence from, from charities, from individuals, from, um, uh, from members of parliament, um, which, uh, which, which we were working through, we are still working through, but obviously the priority is for the people who were at the airport who had the right documentation to actually get on an aeroplane whilst we still had control of the uh, of the airport, that was the priority. That was the right priority. Obviously, we're working through the correspondence as quickly as we are able. But we received, and you can imagine, an unprecedented level of communication from Afghans and the people trying to help Afghans try to get out of the country. Uh, and we will continue. Yeah, continue uh, to James, James uh, Cleverly, I, I'm I'm going to agree with you on one point here. I am incredibly proud of the military. I'm incredibly proud of our government staff who have evacuated so many people without any leadership. It must be really hard working in a team when there is no, when there is very little leadership. And the leadership that is happening is playing catch up. Now we had Penn Farthing on earlier on. Um, well, so he, he uh, let me, no, no, let, no, no, let me finish. No, and he, he evacuated, know, he evacuated a number of animals. First, no, cause this, this ties in with made, the point. He evacuated 200 no, Eddie, cats and dogs uh, and he had, the, the 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 message that was put out was that that the the animals came out ahead of the the humans. The animals were in the cargo. There was an empty plane, and he offered those seats to the government to fly British nationals and Afghans who had helped us for the past twenty years out, and they weren't taken. Why did that not you happen? Made, you made an assertion about leadership. And let me tell you about the leadership that happened at uh, every level here. The uh, advice to British nationals went out in April to leave the country. The Arab scheme was set up in April to leave the country. Uh, negotiations were had with countries around the world to facilitate the air bridges, including uh, uh, incredibly supportive uh, uh, work from uh, the Emiratis and uh, the Qataris. Uh, the 16 Air Assault Brigade were prepped and deployed at pace. There were foreign office, home office, and ministry of defense, civilian officials uh, on the ground facilitating the repatriation. And this was done with people working uh, around the clock, both in Afghanistan and in the UK. And it's, I know, look, it makes great telly and it's a lovely accusation to, uh, to throw forward. But this was at every level from senior ministerial level right through to the people on the ground in Afghanistan, a team effort, and every bit of the team pulled out the stops. It could never be a perfect operation because of the circumstances that we were operating well, because in. Because it was left the for the last minute. We could have it, started this earlier, couldn't we? we couldn't we couldn't have started, started the evacuations April. earlier? France started, we started the evacuations in July, James Cleverly. So how, how, does that, the, how does that figure? We start, the Arab scheme was uh, uh, up and running in April. Our advice for UK nationals was to leave Afghanistan. We gave that advice in April. When commercial flights became increasingly difficult, we started uh, uh, um, arranging charter flights to facilitate their evacuation. When the, when the charter flights became impossible, they were replaced with military flights. When the uh, embassy could no longer be safely operated from uh, and the airport could uh, uh, no longer safely be operated from. We put armed forces on the ground to provide that security envelope within which our civilian officials could operate. Decisions were made at every level throughout this and have been for months. And yes, it's a lovely soundbite. It's a lovely soundbite, but it is deeply, deeply unfair and factually inaccurate. OK, James Cleverly, we're out of time. We'll have to leave it there. But thanks for joining us this morning.